so the unthinkable has happened. We're getting towed. The car has maybe 150 kilometers on it. I was gone for the entire month in Russia. Came back ready to drive and discovered that I had a low tire sensor or a low pressure tire sensor. There is a bolt that big in the rear passenger tire. Whew. The little upside to the misfortune is I get to use this guy for the next little bit. This is the Porsche Macan Turbo. A nice little alternative as a daily. chance to drive a Macan before it was just the base model so this is quite the big upgrade for me this is of course the 2018 model 400 horsepower around 406 pound foot of torque it is the top of the line for the Macan model and I think in my opinion the best SUV that Porsche currently offers so while we sit here inching along in traffic let's get some of the specs out of the way first of course we've got the seven speed pdk in my opinion the best dual clutch transmission on the market lightning quick it responds to exactly what you're thinking especially when you start switching into some of the sport modes which we will get to zero to 64 point eight seconds we'll be testing out of course launch control which puts the biggest smile on my face you shave off an additional 0.2 seconds for an SUV that is lightning quick. But the main thing that you need to know about the Macan is it is essentially an SUV that handles like a sports car. And that is what you're paying the big dollars for. The base of this 90,000 or just under around 87,000. Porsche loves to tack on options, loves to make things ridiculously expensive. Seat belts, for example, in Pebble around 500 bucks. Some of the gauges we've got in white, another 500. You tack on all the options that this car has, it's 20,000 extra bucks. We're looking at 110 grand for this exact model. Not cheap. So just cruising around town, I have it just set to the normal setting. And as you get familiar with the Macan cabin, the thing that I think is just a bit ridiculous is the assortment and volume of knobs I haven't read the manual, but there are a ton, but the most important one is the Sport Plus. That's the one that I've been driving in, and that's the one that gets my heart going. We've got a red light here. Hammering on the gas, Ooh. Even if I have to stop two seconds later, it is worth the thrill. <laughs> okay, enough of the ridiculousness. Let's switch back into just regular settings. When you swap between Sport or Sport Plus, it actively changes the suspension to make it more stiff, give you that race car driver feel but when you're cruising around town in pothole city just like I am now trying to avoid all those nasty bumps bruises on the road but when you want to give it a bit extra when you want to hold the gears and really see what this car has to offer you're making that switch into sport plus and will hold all those gears and you can even change them using the PDK levers on the wheel. So who is this car technically for? And I honestly considered getting an SUV. I've got all my camera stuff in the back. It's something that I was kind of playing around with. Of course, I went for the GTS instead, but having an SUV with this much power, if you need it, if you need the space, if you gotta haul around the kids, if you've gotta haul around all the gear in the back, you wanna get something that still makes you grin, makes you smile, might be the one to go for. I think they look great. I think they have one of the best designs of an SUV currently that are out, especially the rear end. I'm a big, big fan of the back end. Once again, that's more of the compactness. Maybe the only thing that would catch my eye more than this as an SUV, probably the G-Wagon from Mercedes, but that is more money, of course. And a lot of people will argue the Macan is expensive, especially the turbo, even if you're looking at the GTS trim. And I get it. Porsche gets you with their options. It is a premium price to pay. But the thing that you're paying for as we get onto the highway, as I'm about to slam on Sport Plus again, is the performance, is the handling. No other SUV can take a corner like this, can go this quick, and can give you the smile 
that this guy does. And don't get me wrong, I've driven the X5M, great SUV, even the X3, the M340 or the M440i, and I think those had a louder exhaust than this guy. They also felt very quick, but as I hammer the gas here onto the highway, gears are being held down, and this is where this guy shines. It handles. Obviously not as good as my 911, but better than any other SUV that I've driven. You feel planted, you feel safe, secure, and this is where really the Macan shines. And especially because we're in Sport Plus now, we're holding the gear at fourth. If I were to say switch down out of this automatically, we're now cruising in seventh, a bit more economical, better for fuel consumption, of course. But if you want, hammer the gas because it's the PDK, senses that we're back into third now, fourth as we hit 140, 150. The PDK gearbox is truly lovely. It honestly is thinking exactly what I wanna do. I ended up just getting a text. My GTS is ready. We are pulling into Porsche North Toronto to pick up my car. It's been fun. It's been a hint of perhaps the next SUV, the next gear hauler that I need to get. The Turbo Macan has impressed me. And there she is. The Chalk Monster. In one piece, tire repaired. I can finally start driving this guy now. Feels good to be back. Finally, can start driving this puppy. Big shout outs to Porsche North Toronto. Fix my wheel without any problems. The tire gauges, they're all golden tire replaced. Hopefully no more spikes in the road that I'm about to hit. Review for this guy coming very soon. I obviously have to get used to it. I have gotta start driving it and I will definitely enjoy it. I will of course catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes or vlogs. Peace.